Good morning, everyone. We are joined by a fantastic crowd here today. We just had a nice ride on the Grand Concourse. It is a little hot, mucho calor. Um, I'm Polly Trottenberg. I am pleased to be here on behalf of Mayor de Blasio to announce the Phase 3 expansion of City Bike, long awaited. And for the first time, for the first time coming to the great borough of the Bronx with City Bike. We are joined by an all-star lineup here today. We have the Bronx Borough President Diaz. We have our chairman from the City Council Transportation <laughs> Committee, Adonis Rodriguez. We have Assembly Member Michael Blake, Council Member Vanessa Gibson, Senator Jessica Ramos, all the way from Queens to come visit. We have Caroline Sampanaro from now City Bikes parent company, Lyft. We have Tom DeVito from Transportation Alternatives, Jeffrey Ross from uh, Health First, and Gianna Delolio from Bronx Works. We also have a special guest appearance from Camille Arroyo, who is going to talk about an exciting part of what we're announcing today, the accessibility part of City Bike. So I think as you all probably saw on the post this morning, we are thrilled to be announcing phase three. You can see the map. We're going to be coming into the Bronx, further up, and eventually all the way to the top of Manhattan. I know that will make the chairman happy. He's long wanted us to get there. Further into Brooklyn and Queens. And Look, I think you know in the past six years, this system has grown and thrived. We're thrilled now to join with our partners at Lyft and announce the next phase of expansion and just to talk about some of the neighborhoods we will be in. And I know the borough president and others will want to talk, but we'll be starting in the Bronx, Mott Haven, Melrose, Point Morris, Highbridge, Claremont, Morrisania, Longwood, Conkers, and Mount Eden. Yeah, we will be, again, going all the way, finally, to covering the full island of Manhattan, getting up into, finally, into Washington Heights and Inwood. I know Chairman will be happy about that. Much further into Brooklyn, we are already at work this year on filling in what was going to be for the L train, and still a little bit for the L train, finishing out Williamsburg into Bushwick and parts of Ridgewood, Queens. So as you can see, with the $100 million uh, investment that Lyft is making, we are really expanding the system in an exciting way. And I want to give Lyft credit, you know, over the, over the sort of six months since we've been working together, since they took over Motivate, one of the things they pledged to do was to help fix the system, because it had been starting to show some signs of, of uh, you know, operational challenges last summer. Lyft has done a great job of getting the level of bikes back up. They have now got, we've now got over 13,000 bikes in the fleet. They've added a bunch of valet stations. There are now 40 valet stations all over Brooklyn and Manhattan. One right on uh, Coenty Slip, which we're grateful for, those of us who are, are down uh, near 55 water. And they are now breaking records. We saw um, just the other day they had almost 90,000 rides, which is a huge <laughs> amount of volume. So, and I just want to talk about this expansion today because I have, I got the numbers, and admittedly, we think these numbers are right. There, there could be a, a city in China we're not missing. We are currently in New York City we are the eighth largest system because we're around, we're around 13,000 bikes. London is a little bit bigger, Seoul, Paris, Barcelona, Mexico City, and then there are potentially two cities in China that go above that. When we are done with this expansion, we will be at 40,000 bikes. We will be the second or third largest bike share system in the world. <laughs> near, <laughs> admittedly, near as we can tell, this was our, our quick research on all the bike share systems in China. We, we, might have missed one or two, but generally speaking, we are about to sort of catapult in the, the global ranks, I think, of bike share systems. And again, do it carefully and have a system that runs well. We are also today doing a lot more to ensure we are including low-income communities. I know Caroline Sampanara will want to talk more about that. We have memberships for SNAP recipients and NYCHA, and again, we'll be talking about what we're doing to make sure that this program is accessible uh, for people with disabilities. I want to take a minute just to thank the DOT team. I don't know... Is John Frost, all right, John Frost, Michelle Craven, Jennifer Santa Innes, Rebecca Zack, Rami Metal. These are the folks who have done a lot of amazing work in partnership with our, our, our friends at Lyft. I know Julie Wood is here and, and Jules Flynn, and, and you will be hearing from Caroline Sampanaro. But first, now let me turn again to the wonderful array of elected officials we have here. I'm going to start with someone who has been, I think, since the day I walked in the door in this job getting on towards six years now, a relentless champion for when is City Bike coming to the Bronx. Borough President Ruben Diaz, Jr. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Boogie Down Bronx, God's country. And now, finally, we have City Bike here. Uh, I just want to say it's about damn time. 
Um, and, and I mean that in the most sincere and the happiest form to you, Commissioner, to Carolyn, to the good folks at City Bike, uh, to the folks at Lyft, to my colleagues in government, our chairman of the DOT and the City Council, Idanis Rodriguez, all the way from Queens, we have Senator Jessica Ramos, we have Council Member Vanessa Gibson, and of course, Michael Blake, our Assembly Member. Look, we, what we've tried to say all along is that in the Bronx, we ride bikes too. And we just felt left out. And we, don't, we didn't just complain. We, we worked with the city. We, we've made our case. There have been pilot programs here, shared bike programs, with, either with City Bike and others. And, and Bronx sites have voted with their wallets. They have voted with their pedals. We've made a case that City Bike is needed, not only here in the Bronx, but in so many other communities throughout the city of New York who just felt left out. And what this does here today is I said this before and I'll continue to say it, it, it makes city and city bike actually mean something. And we are excited. Let's make some noise that we're here in the Bronx. The, just like any other New Yorker, Bronx sites want to be able to have connectivity between transportation hubs. Just like New Yorkers, uh, Bronx sites understand that we have to protect the environment. And for those of us who own cars, we want to be able to leave our cars at home whenever possible. Just like New York, other, uh, other New Yorkers, Bronx sites know that uh, there is, this is a way to connect families. When you have one of the most hardest things to do, and my colleagues will tell you in the Bronx, is to be able to get to and from the east and west side of the Bronx. This will allow us to do that. Um, as expeditiously as possible. Uh, I have my colleague here who is Dominican, I'm Puerto Rican, and here in the Bronx, we now call it El, El Condado de la Salsarengue. <laughs> and that's because um, the, the Dominican community, the largest population of the Dominican community is now in the Boogie Down Bronx. And when you look at all of these neighborhoods now in the west side of the Bronx, we have so many family members that live in Washington Heights. This would allow for family members to connect to each other without having to take the train all the way down south to come all the way back north. It'll get us through over the bridges as quickly as possible. And then lastly, let me just say this. This would allow for people, whether they haven't been on a bike in a long time, like Senator Ramos, or someone who, like my mom, or assembly member Michael Blake, I'm gonna shout him out, who do not ride bikes, this will allow for people to start riding their bikes and getting healthier. There is no fun, there's such a fun way, there's no better way than to be able to ride your bike, get to know not only the Bronx, but the city of New York through a different vantage point. I'm so happy that we're here. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, City Bike. Thank you, Lyft. Thank you to my colleagues in government who have been championing this cause, not only for the Bronx, but for all of the city of New York. Brevemente en el español, le quiero decir que por fin tenemos City Bike aquí en el condado de la Salsarengue. La realidad es que latinos también nosotros corremos nuestras bicicletas. Latinos saben cómo podemos proteger el ambiente. Latinos sabemos que esto es una forma donde nos podemos seguir eh, cuidando nuestro cuerpo y ser una comunidad más saludable. Le queremos dar las gracias a City Bike, a Lyft, porque ahora la palabra City ahora significa que toda la ciudad puede beneficiar de este programa. A los, a los que viven en el Bronx, usen las bicicletas y lo espero ver también porque yo también soy una persona que uso nuestra bicicleta. A la senadora de Queens, la felicito por estar aquí con nosotros hoy, por ser una campeona y, la, y a todos mis colegas en el gobierno. Gracias por no solamente eh, luchar por el Bronx, sino que todas las comunidades en, en la ciudad de Nueva York puedan beneficiar de este programa. Thank you all. Thank you, Borough President, and congratulations to you. I think we have quite a constellation of electives. Perhaps we'll have the visitors go first, because I do actually want our chairman to speak, because 
you know, in addition to announcing the Bronx today, we're going to get to the rest of northern Manhattan, which he has been a champion of. And as you can see from the map, you know, one of the things that DOT has been working on is improving those Harlem River connections over the bridges for bikes and pedestrians. So now these two parts of the city will be able to bike, we hope, really safely. Thank Mr. You. Chairman. Adonis Rodriguez. Well, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Cold War President Ruben Diaz, Commissioner Paul Tromber, and Mayor de Blasio, and of course, the street blocks and transportation alternative for always keep checking us, especially at a time where it was so important to uh, have discussion about how to make our city more walkable and more, more uh, cyclist friendly. The time is now. The time is now to really continue, as I said before, we com DOT Commissioner, we also want that she has been at the national level uh, running a transportation department. So she has seen how all the city been doing it. She has seen how all the country been doing it. And I feel that we owe to the future generation. We can make our city the most walkable, the most pedestrian friendly in the whole nation and in the whole world. And I think that we have leadership, we have advocates, we have private sector, and we are committed to do it. This, this being said, doesn't mean that this program is in any way perfect. Over seven in 10 of the neighborhood whose media income is less than $20,000 lack access to bike sharing programs. We know that when City Bike was created, it was more intended to serve New Yorkers who live in the Midtown area, who work in and live in that area, mainly thinking about the middle class and the upper class. Well, I think after major negotiation between DOT and City Bike, we have seen commitment dollars on the table to expand the program. Yes, we have to continue expanding bike access to working class community. Yes, bike share should be as affordable to working class New Yorkers. And Commissioner, I, all, I, I will always suggest that we from the mayor and your role and all of us explore the possibility to also include a, 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 a discount when it comes to the similar that we provide to the transit a, a discount to also be used for this program. I feel that it, we are at this moment where we have to understand that, and this is something that I say in the panel that we had like three weeks ago in the museum in New York, saying that getting into the bike, and Senator Schumer, he can say how he got into his bike, he go along the island, along the country, it's good for the air, it's good for his home, but bike is more connected to middle class and, and upper class. We have an opportunity to connect working class. Because immigrants know what it is, as the board president say, the importance of using a bike. My father in the 1950, he has a bike. Most immigrants that came here from Latin America and different places, most of them, they came from places where the bike was the motor transportation. It is in the last couple of decades that a car became a, a symbol of progress. So I'm ready to continue working uh, uh, with the, the DOT commissioner, with the mayor, with all elective. I'm happy to see where we are today. However, I will continue working to expedite the process to expand this program not only to connect it to the South Bronx and to the Washington Eye, but to any community in the city of New York, especially those that they deal with transportation deserts. Nosotros vamos a seguir trabajando con el alcalde, con la comisionada, para dejar un legado en la ciudad de Nueva York de que esta ciudad puede ser la mejor pro peatón, pro ciclista. Si se puede. Thank you. And all the way. From Queens, for her first bike ride in a while, Senator Jessica Ramos, who's been a great champion of this issue. So, for someone who's never had a driver's license, you would think that I was an avid bike rider, but you'd be wrong. I walk everywhere, I take the bus, and I take the train. So ripping off the Band-Aid today after not riding a bike since college around 15 odd years ago, um, felt really great, and I'm actually very proud to say that I did it in the Bronx. Yes. Look, every, I'm not going to repeat everything that everybody else has already said, but, but everybody knows that I made legalizing e-bikes and e-scooters in Albany a priority this past legislative session. We were able to get it done. 
It was about protecting our immigrant delivery workers. And yes, immigrants know in and out how important it is to have uh, a bicycle available in order to increase our micro mobility. Sometimes it's about that first mile or last mile, depending on where you live. I know that that's true, especially in East Elmhurst, which is uh, a transportation desert in my in my district. Um, but yeah, we're finally getting uh, city bikes in Jackson Heights, Elmhurst, and Corona in my district, which is a huge deal. Um, and I'm very proud to be a part of this announcement so that we can continue to find ways to reduce carbon emissions and fight car culture, yes? All right. Brevemente en español, yo más o menos llevaba unos 15 años sin montar en bicicleta, lo confieso, por ahí desde la, desde la época de la universidad. Eh, bueno, nosotros en Queens, en mi distrito específicamente, no tenemos muchos dominicanos ni puertorriqueños ya. Somos la mayoría suramericanos o colombianos o ecuatorianos como yo. Eh, sin embargo, nosotros como cualquier otra comunidad de inmigrantes sabemos lo importante que es tener una bicicleta disponible para poder eh, eh, manejar eh, y, y pues navegar nuestras calles. De hecho, en Bogotá, Colombia, hay ciclovías. Los domingos se cierran las calles en Colombia para poder montar en bicicleta en familia. Los llamamos ciclovías. Eh, y eso es algo que me gustaría haber replicado aquí en Nueva York. Eh, así que obviamente tengo colegas que van a ser mis aliados en, en nuestros próximos pasos eh, para asegurarnos de que haya mucho más micromovilidad disponible para nuestros vecinos. Gracias. Thank you, Senator. Now, again, we are honored to be joined here from, let's talk to some of our other elected officials, Assembly Member Michael Blake, who has been a big champion for us up in Albany. Now, the borough president gave away my secret. I know I don't know how to ride a bike. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, and so, Paul, you can help me out now. All right. You know, I accept the challenge. I accept the challenge. Look, you know, uh, Assemblyman Michael Blake from the 79th District. I, I grew up on Crested and Burnside, and I I would tell my staff often that, you know, we, we had a tricycle when I was a kid, uh, but then you had to make life decisions, and a lot of times along the way, uh, we just couldn't afford a lot of things. You know, I, I stopped driving years ago in, in 2001. I had a near fatal car accident. And so when you think about why today is important, transportation is a civil rights issue. Transportation is an equity issue. For a lot of communities, especially in the South Bronx, we're wondering how you get to and fro. I think obviously when we think about what happened last weekend when you have a power out and you have a blackout, people are trying to wonder how do you get to communities. The borough president said it best. Getting from east to west in the Bronx has always been a challenge. Uh, and this will be a game changer. So. To the commissioner, who has been a, a great champion, uh, obviously to our colleagues in government, to Adonis, to Vanessa, to Jessica, to Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. When we think about the, the allies of Lyft and City Bike and Health First and so many others, you know, for Transit Alternatives that came together, this is opening opportunities that otherwise was not going to happen for many people. And when we think about why today is important, this is providing game changing opportunities, whether it be providing getting groceries home whether it be just having a safe chance to get to and fro, you should have a chance to be able to get home easily and safely, and that's gonna happen because of what happened today. This is showing that the Bronx is God's country, as Borough President always says, and let's continue right now. And, you know, a lot, of kids in, a lot of kids in New York never learn to ride a bike. They're in small apartments. They didn't necessarily have room for them, so that's one of the nice things about City Bike. You don't need to keep the bike in your apartment, and there are a bunch of groups, and we're always, volunteers to help anyone who wants to learn how to ride. It is an amazing way to get around the city. Now let's hear from someone who's also been a great partner and champion on so many things we do, Council Member Vanessa Gibson. I'm not a rider. I just can't swim. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much to everyone for being here. It's a privilege and an honor, and today is really a great day. I am Council Member Vanessa Gibson. This is the district I represent in the City Council, and I'm so grateful for today's announcement. The expansion of City Bike and recognizing that for so many of us in the outer boroughs, we have not always had all of the transportation alternatives and options that we truly need. And I am grateful for the leadership of Commissioner Polly Trottenberg, our Bronx Commissioner Navarro Lopez, DOT, our friends at Lyft, and the entire City Bike team. The Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr., who has been a champion. Many of us watch on Facebook at times him and his wife riding bikes along the Bronx and in the Bronx. And we recognize that for our borough, this is about opportunity, but it's also about access. 
It's also about recognizing so, for so many families, whether you are an EBT recipient, whether you are a resident of public housing, you deserve access to alternative options as well. That's what this announcement is all about. It's recognizing the commitment, the dedication, and the investment that we are making across the city of New York, but particularly in God's country. And so we thank you all to my chair, to the transportation chair at the city council. There has been no other advocate with a stronger voice than Chairman Idanis Rodriguez. And I wanna thank him. He and I share the Harlem River, the High Bridge, which is the oldest standing walking bridge in the city of New York, is in High Bridge, Bronx, and connects to Northern Manhattan. It's about 1,400 steps from Northern Manhattan to the Bronx. These are the options that we want residents to have access to. And in my years in the city council, I've seen how we have transformed the Grand Concourse. I've seen that through efforts like Not 62, where we recognize that the health disparities we face, we're changing those statistics into success stories. And we're giving residents and families better options. I've seen the work we've done in Highbridge, which is on the hill, where we've changed University and Ogden Avenue. I've seen the work we've done in Morris High along West Tremont and Sedgwick, where we're allowing greater access to Roberto Clemente State Park, which we just opened with a $100 million investment. These are our cultural institutions, our open spaces, our treasures that we want residents to have access to. So today's announcement is transformative. It is going to make such a profound difference in this borough and other parts of the city, and we are grateful for that. So we thank you, DOT. We thank you to all the elected officials. We thank you, City Bike, and we thank you, Lyft, for your investment on behalf of the borough of the Bronx. We say thank you, and we look forward to working with you and expanding City Bike to the Bronx. Thank you. I love the elected officials. All right, where's, where's Caroline? So we're now going to call up. You know her. She was formerly a transportation alternatives for many years, doing amazing work on Vision Zero and being a champion for our streets. Now she, as the head of Lyft's micro mobility policy and our partner in today's exciting expansion, Caroline Sempanaro, come up. Hello. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, if you're a member of the City Bike team, raise your hand. All right. Big shout out to that team. We are all so proud and honored to get to be a part of this incredible moment in which New York City will be delivering these results to the Bronx and other neighborhoods across the five boroughs. Um, equity will be central to everything we do in this expansion. I wanted to highlight a couple more ways that equity will be a part of the expansion. The footprint is obviously number one, but more importantly almost is the reduced bike share, reduced fare bike share membership, which we launched last year in partnership with Health First, who is here today with us. Big round of applause for Health First. This membership program is life-changing. It's a $5 a month membership program available to SNAP recipients and NYCHA residents. Thousands of New Yorkers are already benefiting from this program. In the current city bike footprint, we're serving 40% of NYCHA residents in, the, in New York City, actually, um, with the city bike system. And we're making sure that we're reaching those residents on the day-to-day -to, -day to make this transportation system accessible and equitable. As part of our commitment to make sure we expand the reach of that reduced bike share, reduced fare bike share membership, sorry, that's kind of a wonky name, um, we're investing more in it. Today we're also announcing a $300,000 grant program that will look to empower local community organizations to lead um, outreach efforts on expansion and on the reduced bike share, reduced fare bike share membership. <laughs> Stay with me now. Reduced fare bike share membership. Thank you. <laughs> but seriously, we are, we are thrilled to be a partner with the City of New York. The success of City Bike has always been in the leadership behind it that you often don't see, and that is the amazing commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Commissioner Trottenberg. Give her a round of applause. Our amazing Transportation Committee Chair, Rodriguez. Borough President, Diaz and all of the amazing elected officials who have shown tireless support for this system to make sure that it becomes a true part of the transportation network in New York City. And so we are ready to get to work and couldn't be more excited. Thank you so much. Thank you, 
Caroline. So I want to call on uh, one of your colleagues because among the many partners that have not only helped us have the momentum to expand the system, but to continue to expand cycling throughout New York City's been transportation alternatives. We have Tom DeVito here. Uh, Good morning. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, thank you to all the elected. My name is Tom DeVito. I'm the Senior Director of Advocacy at Transportation Alternatives. I'm going to keep this really short. Uh, I was a very young organizer uh, when City Bike launched, and I remember being out talking with people on the street. Uh, this is when it was just the docks and there, the bikes actually weren't uh, stationed there yet. Uh, and there was no consensus uh, in the city at the time that this was a program that was going to work. In fact, there was a lot of skepticism. Uh, we at Transportation Alternatives, however, and our membership of over 150,000 uh, folks uh, citywide, we knew that it would work. We knew that if you provide people with an affordable, a uh, uh, safe uh, way to get around uh, with bikes, uh, people will do it. So City Bike vastly lowered the bar to entry uh, for this form of transportation that is uh, extremely reliable, uh, it is green, uh, and ultimately we need to be doing more uh, to foster it and grow the number of folks in the city who are riding. But it was never fundamentally fair the limited footprint that City Bike was in. Uh, so we are thrilled to be here uh, for this expansion uh, into Upper Manhattan, into the Bronx, uh, and then further into Queens and into Brooklyn. As an organization, we are going to be supporting every effort to expedite this process, make it as fast as possible and as effective as possible. Um, but our fight isn't over. Uh, we need to make sure that as this program is expanding, uh, that safe bike infrastructure is expanding along with it. Bike share and bike lanes, protected bike lanes, uh, go hand in hand uh, in order for these systems to be successful. Uh, so we are really eager uh, to be working with all the electeds here, all the community partners with Lyft uh, and everybody else uh, to, to keep progress uh, on this front. So thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. And again, thanks for your advocacy and partnership. So you've heard a lot about Health First, which has been another amazing partner in ensuring that this system can be accessed by a lot of New Yorkers. And we have Jeffrey Roth here. Come on up, Jeffrey. Thank you for having me, Commissioner. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Health First, the Health First team. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with elected officials. Uh, we are here to support the Reduce Fair Bike Share Program, City Bike, uh, and our partners. It's been, this is near and dear to our hearts. We have about one in three Medicaid members in New York City. This is a low income population that does not get access to benefits such as City Bike. And so it's, we're proud to be a part of this partnership. We're proud to be here. We've been here for 25 years. We're looking to be here years to come with the elected officials, City Bike, and others supporting us in, in raising the standards for low-income New Yorkers. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey, for your partnership. Right, we are also joined from Bronx Works with Gianna Delolio. Come on up, John. Good morning. It's such an honor to be here and represent Bronx Works, and more importantly, to represent the over 50,000 members of the Bronx and growing uh, individuals who we service through our programs. Bronx Works is a settlement house and it's intrinsic to our mission to go into underserved neighborhoods and assist with programs and services. So the fact that City Bike is expanding to the Bronx just it, it, it just matches so well with our mission. Um, the expansion will address equity issues, access issues in neighborhoods that have been traditionally underserved and provide more transportation options and an opportunity to integrate health and wellness. And that's also really important to Bronx Works and to the Bronx, not 62. We want to um, definitely see our borough grow as a, a stronger, healthier community. So we look forward to participating with City Bike and all the partners as we uh, help to assess areas that need City Bike uh, sites. And um, thank you again for allowing me to be here today. Woo. 
Thank you, Joanna. It is, it is great to have local partners. We're going to work with Lyft and local groups all over the city again to make sure that as we do this big expansion that we're getting into every neighborhood and letting people know the benefits. So one more exciting thing we're going to talk about today. We had long heard with this system, in addition to have a, obviously a big desire that we expand, that we get into the Bronx and more neighborhoods, that we find a way to make the system accessible. And we are lucky to be joined today by Camille Arroyo, who runs the accessibility programs for us at New York City DOT, to talk a bit about that. Camille. <laughs> Known as Q. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, so my name is Pumel Arroyo, and I have the honor of serving as the Chief Accessibility Specialist at New York City DOT. And I am thrilled to be here with our partners at City Bike and Lyft. And it's a true pleasure to work with people like Liam and Ryan, Caroline, and the team at City Bike Lyft who know what access means. And access is a lot from affordability to access to the Bronx, placement locations, but also accessibility. And it is an absolute pleasure to be here with our demo bike that we're using to pilot our hand cycling operations. The very first true bike share, accessible bike share operation in the country. As you can see, I have my wheelchair behind me, which I can strap on and commute to and from work. And you hear it now, I am a cyclist. I am a New Yorker with a disability, and I too am a cyclist. And like me, <laughs> and like me, there are many other New Yorkers with disabilities who are also cyclists and need an opportunity, and also beyond access people with disabilities. Borough President, we were just talking about your mom, who d might not be able to ride a, a, a standard bicycle, but could ride a hand cycle. Uh, uh, Michael Blake, I will provide you with a hand cycle, and we will be going up and down the Grand Concourse. <laughs> Folks, we are talking about access to so many. New York, in New York City, we have over 900,000 New Yorkers with disability, and this is a great transportation option. Not only is it fun, not only can we be healthy, but we can get to and from where we want to go. And it's a true pleasure to be here. I'll say real quick in Spanish, mi nombre es Kemuel Arroyo, y es un tremendo placer estar aquí, yo soy dominicano, y como dijo Idani y Rubén anterior, nosotros sabemos lo que es montar bicicleta, nacimos con bicicleta en nuestras casas, y estar aquí hoy demostrando el acceso, que la expansión de City Bike para los neoyorquinos con disabilidad es un tremendo placer. Thank you for, for, to all of you, thank you for being here today. All right, I think if we got all our speakers. I think we have, we're ready to take questions. We're gonna do on topic and then if folks wanna do off topic things, maybe we'll, I can stay behind and we'll let all these nice elected officials go. I know Gersh has the first well, question. Actually, just to be specific, so you talked about, uh, Carolyn talked about the map currently in the city bike has about 40% of NYCHA residents in it. Now, what percentage of NYCHA residents will be in the map in 2023? What is the total population of New York that will be in the map in 2023? Good question. All right. I think you've already stumped us, Gersh. Okay, hang on. I'm looking at John and Michelle. They're going to quickly get the answer for you there. All right, any other questions? All right. Pushing your luck as always. Yeah, look, it, it, it is a good question, and obviously it's no secret this has not been a great year for us in terms of cyclist fatalities, and I know a lot of you have heard the mayor has said we're going to be coming out soon with some details on a, on a new um, cycling safety plan. But one thing we have found, uh, as we expand City Bike, it actually dovetails very nicely with the, those are areas in where we're going to focus our infrastructure efforts, and, and when you look at this map, you can see that it dovetails with what we announced last year is our cycling priority areas. Those are areas represented by, by some of the elected officials here where we're seeing cycling increase, but we know we need more infrastructure to make sure that it's safe. And we found, I mean, in Brooklyn on 4th Avenue is a perfect example. That project, when I came in the door, originally envisioned as not having a protected bike lane. As City Bike hit Park Slope and it became obvious it was going to continue down to Sunset Park, et cetera, it became clear that that kind of a major corridor needed to have protected bike infrastructure and everyone, you know, we achieved political consensus on that pretty quickly. So I think it's a fair challenge for us, Gersh. We've got to make sure as this system expands, we're building out that infrastructure, but we also find that it produces a lot of support for that infrastructure. And we have found in places where 
we see city bike, we do get a phenomenon that I know you know well, which is safety in numbers, which is it brings a lot of people out on the streets cycling. It makes them more visible to motorists. And, and a credit to, to, to Lyft and so forth, the city bike system has been an extraordinarily safe one for the most part. Yeah, ben. Uh, Uh, what's that process going to be like this time around, and you know, how many docs? City Board Six, Park Slope, Cobble Hill, Carroll Gardens. There was a lot of controversy when the docks first went in, but I, I'm, and I heard a lot of complaints, and I know the mayor did as well. But I have to say, I would say probably within about a month and a half. The complaints went away, and it just became part of the streetscape. And you know, it's an amazing system. People ride it a lot. So just, you know, no question. It, you know, it's a process to put the docks in, and there'll be some back and forth. And I want to give credit to my team, and maybe John will talk a little bit about the siting system. When you, I, I've ridden in now bike share systems all over the country. We have one where we've really done it well, where we've spaced the docks really closely together, where we've put them in visible and accessible spots. We've made our system one where it's really easy to ride. And if you go to other cities, you go to places like Chicago or San Francisco, they've had a much harder time citing the station. So we're going to get it right. We're going to do a great job. We'll work with elected officials. We'll work with community boards. We understand there's a hunger to get these, you know, these neighborhoods with city bike as fast as possible. So we're going to move quickly. We're going to start the work with the community up here in the Bronx in the coming months, but maybe I want John, John Frost, who really runs the program for you, just to talk a little bit in detail about the methodology of siting station. Uh, sure. Uh, so the, the system is based on a principle of 28 stations per square mile, and that would be the same whether you're in Midtown Manhattan, oh, excuse me. Uh, whether that would be the same whether you're in Midtown Manhattan or in Brooklyn or the Bronx. The system is really based around walkability and the ability that any anytime you're anywhere within the service area, you should be able to walk within five minutes to get to a station. Uh, so we plan on, on doing this new expansion based on that same principle, which is what, what uh, ensures a strong network and a, and a high quality service for all the users uh, throughout. Uh, and we'll be starting community outreach uh, in, uh, in the South Bronx, as well as in um, Manhattan, north of 130th Street uh, this fall. It should be about a six to nine month process where we'll work with community boards and other stakeholders to uh, find out re really where the ideal uh, locations for stations for those communities. Um, but as the commissioner said, we're going to work hard on it and get it right. So wait, maybe just don't run away, John. Right. So, so remember, right now we are in Brooklyn. We're doing end of Williamsburg. Bushwick, and then we're going a bit into Ridgewood and Queens. Our next focus, our next focus is going to be northern Manhattan and the Bronx. We are as quick as we possibly can, and I, I want to, you know, we're, we're thinking through the team a little bit what the timing has looked like. Continue to do some build out in Queens and Brooklyn. So next year we'll be looking at that too. But I, I do. Sorry, go ahead. Well, you know, we we are a team of about 12 people at DOT who do this. Um, so. You know, I, I have tasked the team with thinking what's the fastest we can do this, but I want to be careful not to overcommit at the moment. We're going to see how it goes. But believe me, I would love to be doing work in all four boroughs as quickly as possible. Yeah, so, so this is a discussion, obviously, those of you who saw the, the um, CFC report, that, that has long been sort of a debate. The system, as a lot of you know, was started in the Bloomberg administration, as Tom, as Tom was mentioning, sort of back when people weren't even sure it was going to work, and then in the de Blasio administration has been a public-private partnership uh, done through private investment. And again, today, this is just the, the dark blue and red parts of the map that shows you what $100 million of investment will do in terms of coverage. You know, there has been a debate about whether we might put public funds in. I, I know it's one I've talked to the chairman about. Um, I think we're always open to having that discussion. Our estimation of sort of what would be need what would be needed in terms of funding past this phase phase three somewhere around 450 to 500 million dollars some of that could be private some of that could be public I think that's a that's a debate that's ongoing and again one we're we're happy to have For how much to, to cover the whole city 
And remember, New York City, just for those of you who don't know, it is 303 square miles. It, it is a big city. Um, as city bike expands, as DOT commissioner, how would you like to see the NYPD enforce traffic laws for cyclists? Because as we know, it's been a very fatal year. Yeah, it, it has been. And look, I think you've heard, I think you heard from, from Chief Monaghan. I think one good step is, you know, they're going to stop the practice of ticketing cyclists after there has been a a crash and a fatality and you know this is something that the mayor has talked about it's an ongoing effort obviously to make sure that NYPD is keeping the bike lanes clear and something we need to do more of on the DOT side we know make sure that it's harder for vehicles to get into the bike lanes it's a balancing act with also making sure that the bike lanes can be cleaned by sanitation if it's snow plowed but look that's an area where and you'll hear more about it in our upcoming bike safety plan we know there's more to do Well, again, we're, I mean, we're already underway in Williamsburg, Bushwick, Ridgewood. Next, you will see parts of South Bronx and parts of uh, northern Manhattan. We'll, we'll, I don't know I quite want to announce today exactly what the dimensions are going to be, but in, in, the coming, in the coming months. A follow-up to the previous question. I know you said that um, there seems to be a lot of enforcement on the driver's side. Do you think that NYPD should also focus more on the cyclist side? I mean, I think if you were, and I don't want to speak for NYPD, I think if you were to hear them tell it, they do a decent amount of enforcement on both. I mean, I think we would always say, obviously, the onus is on the person behind the, the four-ton vehicle to drive safely. But, you know, one thing we're going to be doing, certainly, again, we're not having a good year in terms of cyclist fatalities, getting out there with PD to do education for everybody, reminding everybody of the rules of the road. We're going to be focusing. One thing we've seen this year, unfortunately, is a, a fair number of fatalities involving trucks. We're going to be re-engaging with all our partners in the shipping industry, trucking fleets, et cetera, to, to do everything we can think of to try and improve the safety culture. Yeah, I mean, again, this, this program started um, you know, I think the way most bike share programs start, which is under the densest part of the city, which admittedly is obviously, you know, sort of not the, the most low income part of the city. We have grown it phase two is the, the phase one and phase two are the lighter blue. And look, I would say this, I think a lot of you know this, when I came in as commissioner, even with just phase one, the program was facing operational problems, financial problems. The operator at that time, a company called Alta was sort of teetering on the edge. We worked to get a new operator to come in, motivate. It took some time just to get the existing system up and running. Then we worked together to come up with the plan for phase two. I'd say a couple of years into getting phase two up and running, motivate was starting to struggle a little bit and made it clear that they wanted to be taken over by Lyft. That took some time to work out and part of the bargain that we struck with Lyft, and I, I, I'm proud to say I think the city drove a hard bargain is that we wanted a major investment to start to get into more of the low-income neighborhoods of the city. And Lyft came to the table, to their credit, with $100 million. And you can see the results on the map here today. So look, we want to move at a faster pace. But I will also just say running bike share systems, they don't just run themselves. They take a lot of work, a lot of hands-on management. And you know, again, I'm proud of the partnership. By the time we are done here in the next few years, again, we will be, I think, the second or third largest system in the world. Doesn't mean we won't keep going. We will. But you know, I think we're making good progress. I would just add on top of that, we did this summer try out, because you know, it does take time to build out a dock system, dockless, which is another piece of the puzzle. We were up here in the Bronx, north shore of Staten Island and the Rockaways. We're going to be, as we expand this system, doing a borough-wide dockless experiment in Staten Island. We'll see how that works. And you know, as the senator here was talking about, we may soon have legalized e-bikes and e-scooters as well. So there are a bunch of different ways we're going to be pursuing what's now called micro-mobility all over the city. So um, obviously here everybody is very excited about this, but I'm sure there's going to be people out in the boroughs who see City Bike as a harbinger for jet gentrification. How do you work with the communities to kind of fight that stereotype, maybe they just because they associate it with Manhattan? How do you work to kind of break that uh, perception? Yeah, and, and I think, I'm especially, proud of, I think Caroline should come up and talk about this too. You know, one thing a lot of you have covered is our work with the Bed-Stuy Restoration Corporation because that is obviously probably one of the most intensely gentrifying neighborhoods in the city. And obviously where I think there was some understandable 
you know, skepticism about city bikes, skepticism about DOT's efforts to build out the bike infrastructure. And working with a local community-based group, we have done, I think they have done phenomenal work in helping, I think, to emphasize some of the things you heard from the borough president and others, that this is a healthy way to travel, that this is an affordable way to travel, that it should be for all New Yorkers. They've really helped increase membership in that neighborhood, and I, I don't know if the, any yeah, others want to talk just, on that topic. I just want to say this. Gentrification is a very complicated topic, but within the umbrella of that topic, when you get a frustrated community, it's about the fact that they see investments in, a, in other communities that they don't see in theirs, or that they only see investments once a certain segment of the population has left that community. For the people here in the Bronx, what, what we see, is what, what I've been hearing, is that they want city bike too. And, and you, we, we, you know, it, whether it's, the, it, whether it's um, a telltale, telltale sign of, of gentrification to come, no, what people are saying is we see this in other communities. Please don't wait until we leave to give, to give the new uh, residents in this area this amenity, uh, this program. What this today does is says to the people of the Bronx and people throughout the city of New York who have been lifelong residents of their community that they're going to have access to this program and we're not waiting for them to be uh, displaced or pushed out or, or we're not just only affording this program to a certain segment of the population in the city of New York. People in the Bronx, people in parts of Queens, in Brooklyn who see city bike being afforded to all other parts of the city are saying, what about us? Today we're saying, we're, we, we're finally giving you the same program. I just want to add that there's a huge difference between community development and community displacement. And there isn't really any data that supports that in any way, shape, or form, City Bike foments any more com uh, real estate development in uh, neighborhoods uh, like uh, m many here in the Bronx and like many in my district. Um, we've begun to see a lot of gentrification in my district, but really it's been a lack of resources on say Roosevelt Avenue, for example, uh, that has been traditionally ignored by every level of government um, that, uh, that really has um, led to us feeling like certain things being imposed on us would lead to uh, more affluent, wider neighbors. Um, but City Bike, I think, is actually a program, despite being a public-private partnership, um, uh, that will actually lend itself to mobility for everybody. It's actually about equity and access. Right, but I, I want to say, I don't know that I talk to people in a bunch of other cities. I don't know that any other city is talking about even doing it as fast as we are. This is, just to be clear, a huge amount of territory here. So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of not going to totally go with the contention that we're moving slowly. I think we're going to move pretty aggressively. Well, we're not the only piece of the puzzle. To be fair, Lyft has to have the equipment, the docks, et cetera. So there, there's two parts to the puzzle. But listen, again, I think we're... You know, this is, we're laying out the schedule as we see it now. We are happy to see if there are ways to accelerate it, particularly, I think, if we have an enthusiastic reaction from elected officials, et cetera. Let's see if we can find ways to make it go Just faster. Um, so at the, the fall, we're working with DOT on that plan now. So yeah, we're super excited to bring him back, and and they'll be here soon. I don't have the exact number to, to say now, but again, super popular. We're really excited to bring him back into the system, and and they'll be here soon. Will they be legal on the West Side Greenway? By then? <laughs> uh, Senator, Assembly Member. <laughs> We don't know. Stay tuned. <laughs> Last one or two on yeah. topic. Go. Not until we see equity in the Bronx first. I was approached by to do subsidies before, so I would of moving forward. 
But you know what? The rest of the city has been able to benefit from City Bike without public officials giving towards the program. Give us some of the City Bike here first, and then we could have that conversation. Highly skeptical about corporations in general, and public-private partnerships are something that um, I think lend itself to good pilot programs and certainly in, in, uh, increases access with prog pro programs like City Bike. But ultimately, I do believe in overall equity and um, in the civilians' responsibility towards each other. Any more? Yeah, I mean, again, the, the, the good news is that this, the where we're doing the expansion dovetails with areas that we had already labeled as sort of our bicycle priority areas where we're already on the ground talking to local communities about putting in infrastructure. And I think you'll see when we put the plan out coming shortly, some more details about how it's going to dovetail with this expansion. All right, if there are no more, oh, well, we'll let all the elected officials go, and then I think we can do off topic. All right, thank you all.